There are some new faces on stage with us today, but that does not change the storyline. G2 looking to defend their title from last year, and Team Liquid is revenge. But how easy do you think it's going to be? Because it feels like it's easier said than done. Yeah, you can see Petra really wanted to find an opening with that dog, but wow, a triple coming out here for G2. Mimi now shoots the wall, but still turns around for the pick. A second one on her Kojina, but finally Vizera comes in with two of her own, three into the round. As they close the gap, they just wait for their angles, and we close up the first map with G2 winning 14 to 12 in the overtime of Sunset. No flashes, and Sarah's on the off angle. Beautiful with a hat trick with support from Petra. There's that first contact by Stunnerline, so two kills quite easy there. And there's a showstopper for confirmation, allowing Roxy to trade it right back. Beautiful flash, though, it gets one full blinded, but Daiki's right there in the end. Low HP, the lineup was almost there. Mr. Satchel, oh, second one, too far away. Whoa! No way! No, 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 that shouldn't have happened. Keep all their bodies towards A. Oh my, four kills for Mimi! Two shots wow. coming in, maybe with the ace, and that's gonna be G2 winning this series. guys just saw the Prime Gaming post-match highlights for Game 1, but it's time to get us into Game 2. Welcome back, everyone, once again to the Game Changers Championship 2023. I'm joined by Baby Bay and Ender here. It is EG time versus Team SMG. Let's start with EG because I feel like everything about EG across the board this year has just been about miracle runs. Yeah. Christy, what another this one. This is the team that shouldn't exist, let alone <laughs> be here. Like, the roster was thrown together at the last possible second with Lori exiting Shopify Rebellion and five days before GC3, they're getting to practice like, I don't know, probably like eight hours combined across those days, the brand new IGL, and yet they make that miracle run throughout stage three, not just to qualify, but to take down V, formerly V1, now Shopify, <laughs> to be the number one seed representing America. That was just a ridiculous story, fairy tale run. You couldn't have written a better story. Yeah, and, and apart from like a phenomenal performance from Keensey, obviously, who was like was dominating in that series, I actually think they played the macro game really well against Shopify, and I think that that has a lot to do with their coaching. I think they have great coaching, and I like the way that they anti strated Shopify. Yeah, of course, they're coming in here with a new player. It is Nora, and she is actually standing by with Mika Fabs right now, so let's send it down to them and get a quick word. Hey, Nora, do you have time for a quick question? All right, perfect. Nora here, um, and she is from EG, and we're here. And I have a really quick question for you. There is a big one on everybody's heads right now. You guys have had to deal with some sudden roster changes. How are you dealing with this? I just taking it day by day. Just every day is a new day, going with that mentality, and just trying to have as much fun as possible with my new teammates. That's a beautiful mindset. Mm -hmm. Can't wait to see you kill it out there. Good luck. Thank you. I mean, let's talk about this. This is going to be one of the highest pressure situations you could be put in as a player because Christy Nora is coming in to fill the huge shoes of a former player. Uh, but tell us, who is she? Uh, what do you know about her? And what can yeah. we expect from her? So Nora, Scary Shark 32, whatever you want to call it, <laughs> she comes, uh, she's been grinding out in the GC scene for quite some time. It's sort of like right underneath that, that tier one, like trying to bust into the main event. She has played a lot of Sky, which is why it might be a little bit strange. Uh, and why I'm not even necessarily positive the roles are going to be what you'd expect. If it is a one-for-one -one uh, swap, we will have to see. But she's been playing with Supernova Galaxy uh, for the, the this year, at least. And they almost made it to the, the top eight here. They actually got eliminated by EG at the very last hurl. So you lose 0-2 oh to goodness. EG, and then you get the call, hey, actually, we need you. And now she's here to compete on the biggest stage in GC. The last time something like that happened was... 
getting uh, getting owned by uh, Envy and then joining their team. So I mean, this could be crazy. This could be another yeah. A scenario, but big shoes to fill indeed. And uh, touching on what you were saying about you know uh, swapping in roles, ro yeah. like role for role, I think it's I think it's just tough. I feel like. It has to be a comfortability thing. I don't know if Nora's comfortable on Duelist. We don't know what they're going to do. I don't, I don't know what they're going to do. You got any uh, words on the street? What do you think? So uh, what I've been hearing from my players in ranked is that they've been seeing Nora on Duelist, locking it in, seeing like Rays and stuff like that. So, and honestly, that makes sense if you are trying to like stick to the most comfortability. Then you also have a team like G2 that's like, ah, uh, forget everything. We'll play brand new roles. So we'll have to see. I do think like when you look at who would have to shift around, it would be, okay, does like Starbound now end up playing Duelist ideas? Would Lori then be going into a sentinel role she played a lot of sage in the past but that's not really the same thing as playing a killjoy or a cypher um so simplicity wise it makes sense to to put nora into the duelist but then the rest of the team is obviously going to have to step up because this is going to be an incredible challenge for nora to enter into the biggest scene out of nowhere yeah i mean uh, you're a great duelist player baby Bay. how easy or difficult do you think it is for someone who don't have that experience on the duelist to slot in uh, on land of all places i think it's gonna be really difficult because like there's so many timings and, and things that you do as a duelist player that is like just intuition based and you need the experience in order to get that now that being said maybe it's a situation where it's like oh no brain all aim yeah. you know <laughs> maybe, Nora go maybe kill. Nor yeah maybe nor hey. go kill will be viable and insane but we, like we'll, we'll, we won't know until we see it in the server right so yeah uh, i want to hear a little bit more from them as well because athena actually had the opportunity to sit down with nora laurie and thea for a chat about the new roster and their roles as well take a look at this I'm here with EG and I'm joined with the lovely Lori, Thea, and Scary Shark 32 also known as Nora. So I just have a couple quick questions for you guys. Um, obviously, the core EG roster, you guys kind of beat Super Galaxy Nova, which is the team that Nora was originally on in GC3. So I was wondering, when you guys beat them, was that kind of where you kind of saw Nora? And is that the reason you picked her up? Or was there like an extensive trial? Um, yeah, I mean, we definitely saw Nora in the scene, and I think, you know, she's super underrated. You know, she's really good. Um, and yeah, I mean, we did go through like a mini trial process, but um, yeah, she was definitely like the best out of all of our trials, so she was an easy pick. That's really good to hear. I love that. I know how trials can be, so they can be like really hard, but I think it's really good that you guys found like a, a really quick fix. That was really good. Um, so my second question, obviously, because Nora, I know you don't really play duelist that much mm -hmm. and you guys obviously have a hole in your duelist role. So what are the roles looking like right now? What do you mean? I'm playing ISO. <laughs> <laughs> I'm playing Yoru. <laughs> uh, okay. Leaks. Yeah. Yep. All Bring right. out the ISO. <laughs> <laughs> no, um, I'm playing, I'm pretty much playing initiator the whole time. Okay. So, I mean, it wouldn't make sense to role swap, but... I mean, we believe in Nora on the duelist role. I mean, she yeah. she definitely impresses, and that's why she's here. So, that's yeah, we're awesome. pretty confident. I love to hear that. And so, like, who's kind of IGLing? Are you still in the IGL role, or have you guys switched it up a bit? T has always been the IGL. Oh, oh I'm my gosh! I cannot IGL for my life. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> okay, cool. Sorry. Yeah. Um, no, so you you're IGLing. That's yeah. awesome. Yes. Yeah. Okay, that's great. Cause I know like fixing roles and like mixing up roles is like kind of a little bit hard. So how has it been so far? Oh, um, easy. I mean, yeah, I'm on controller. Lori's still on her initiator, and Nora came in as a duelist, and it's like, it's perfect. Thank you guys so much for joining me. I'm so excited to watch you guys play, and I'm so excited to see how you do in this event. Thank you. Bye. Bye. Thank you. <laughs> I know they're joking about the ISO, but like, no. why not? No. Nope. No? Because they want to win. <laughs> hey, hey, hey. Don't, you don't, don't say that. Don't say that. You never know. You never know. Uh, but one player I want to talk about, we saw her there, is uh, Laurie. I feel like a super underrated player. I know uh, we have a lot of like a hype, especially in NA, about players like Fluorescent and so on. But Laurie is just so consistent. And let's not forget, been in a grand final on LAN already, Christy. Yeah, no, literally, if you just watched last year's, uh, last year's championship and then are coming in today, you're like, Lori's one of the top five players in this event. She was a freak in Berlin. She was so, so good. Often, again, playing stuff like the Sage and just fragging out for the team. She was one of the most clutch players uh, for that Shopify team, of course, in the past. But this year has been a roller coaster, right? With the roster changes to that old uh, Shopify roster to then only getting picked up by EG 
strategy just before that stage three, but her form has maintained throughout. You can never count her out. She is always the top player to watch, I feel like, for them. Yeah, and, and, and the way she went out last year was like so rough, you know, and you know she's here and she wants that back. She wants that mm -hmm. title because they were so close. I mean, come on, man. Yeah, you got to see. I, I think that's a really great point, actually. She's got a lot of the back of her mind. She's aiming for that trophy. Uh, but the fact is, EG, they got to go up against a, a heavy hitter of APAC today. It is Team SMG and Baby Bay 70 and 4 on maps. They've not lost a single series this entire year. Yeah. I mean, <laughs> Wait, I, I, is this I, I don't the even Star Wars <laughs> intro yeah, for them? <laughs> like, like, look at this. This is insane. Like, how do you not lose an entire year? The last time they lost was like October last year, October 2nd. That's yeah. the last time they lost. I would start like singing the Imperial March, yeah. but I'm scared to get in DMCA. <laughs> like this team just simply does oh, not lose. Crazy. Unlimited power. Yeah, no, that, literally. that's literally what they are. Locking the neon, they've got the zappy yeah. fingers, they've got it all. The, the confidence that this gives you going into a tournament is awesome. But on the flip side, if they do lose, how are they gonna, like, what's their composure gonna be like for the You've gotta be able to bounce back, yeah. right? I think like C9 White was the team that last year had gone forever without a loss, and that definitely is going to shake you. I will shout out at the very end of that scroll, we saw the 2-0 over Full Sense Sapphire, which is the spiritual successor to X10 Sapphire, who represented <laughs> uh, APAC here uh, in, in Berlin last year. Um, so Team SMG clearly miles ahead. Oh yeah, and if you look at the map pool as well, they've only dropped four maps, of, of course, and one of them was a, a Fracture, I believe, which is not in the, uh, in the pool anymore, yeah. so only three if you think about it. But one player I really want to talk about is Aniri because, Christy, I feel like we should have seen her here last year. I, I felt heartbroken that she didn't make it to Berlin. Literal, the, the shock of last year in the APAC scene was that Aniri was not able to move on with Alter Ego Celeste. Alter Ego Celeste was a super team that dominated throughout all of 2022 and the final hurdle, they dropped to that X10 oh. Sapphire team. A full five game series Aniri playing her absolute heart out, but it falls away at the end. She's denied the chance to go to the international stage, X10 go to middling results, and then coming out of that, she finds herself without a team. Alter Ego Celeste disappears. She actually doesn't have a slot on a roster for the full first few months of the team. Team SMG was playing with another player and only added her in a couple months into the year. But since she has come in, and even before they were looking dominant, Aniri has continued to crush through. This time, that super team was lived <laughs> up to at the end. They were not gonna have that five uh, game <laughs> series at the end where she falls. No, Aniri is conquering. And and here to make a statement. I mean, this is like, I'm getting goosebumps as you're retelling this because uh, Baby Bay, this is what, what we love about what we do, right? We get to see players like this uh, make a name for themselves and compete at the highest level, finally. Yeah, it's absolutely freaky that a talent like that couldn't have made it last year after being so dominant and you know, now that she's here now, I'm sure she has a lot to prove and she's gonna she's gonna be hungry for that. You you yeah. have all these players, it's like revenge of like who they had to play against at last <laughs> year's championship. And she's like, no, I want revenge for not being able to be <laughs> here even, last even time. Get there in the first yeah, place. Yeah, like I'm, I'm here to make a name for myself now. Yep. I'm gonna go out and say that this for me is probably the most highly anticipated land debut for, for any player we have in this tournament right now. Uh, I can't wait to see what, can she, what she can do. But also, uh, we've spoken a lot about IGL today. So let's bring up the IGL of Team S. SMB as well, Kahibi. Again, one of the IGLs who just puts up numbers. Uh, someone who's very, very reliable for the team. Yeah, obviously an incredible shooter for the team as well. But it's funny hearing how uh, Team SMG talk about themselves because Kahibi just says that she's the coach and then the, <laughs> then, like she does so much of the work to, to build them through. And also the, the analysts of the region always talk about Team SMG as having a hive mind. Like they're one voice and instantly reacting to the calls that Kahibi is making and she's doing all of that keeping them all on her leash while she's putting on these insane performances i just don't get it yeah there, there's nothing you want more as an igl than you make a call and it, or a rotation call or anything and your team is instantly on it that is such a great feeling to have an, as, as an igl and i'm sure that's what helps her get these kills because she's confident in her team's rotation she's able to get those timings on sentinel and that that's how that plays out it's good yeah but also how do you prep for eg in this scenario if you were uh, them again a very hive man i'm sure they're on the same page but eg they have a, a roster change and also their play style is wildly different uh, to a team like Team SMG. Yeah, I, I think that going into this, I think that they're going to be way more confident knowing that the star player of EG is not here. You know, and, and I think that you don't have to do much. I don't think you need to counter strat. I think you need to play your own game. I'm a, I'm a big advocate of playing your own game first before having to make any adaptations. Because if what you're doing already works, there's no point in switching it up. 
Yeah, I mean, uh, speaking of Kahibi, I'm very, very excited to hear from her. She is actually standing by with Mika Fabs right now. Take it away. Kohaibi, can we have a really quick word with you? Okay, perfect. Mika Fabs here with Kohaibi, the IGL coach of Team SMG. Kohaibi, you guys have gone undefeated so far in APAC this year. How is the team feeling? Are they more confident, a little bit more confident, less confident, or something going up against the best teams now in the world? We are very confident because we have been practicing a lot in Brazil as well. So um, I think in all case, we are our own demons. So. Sounds good. We are looking forward to you guys. Best of luck out there and have a good game. I felt like that was really cold. I felt like that was I a cold it. answer. They got their own demons. That's that's what that's what's gonna stop them. Uh, but I mean, I asked uh, Baby Bay the question earlier of how they're gonna face up against EG. But what are EG gonna do against them? You feel like? I mean, ultimately, EG are in the difficult position of having to bring in Nora, and that's where I wonder: Do you spend the last month trying to integrate Nora into the system, like just playing the exact same roles uh, as previously, or do you try to change some things? Right? Because you can, in that time, do some larger composition overhauls and I feel like if you're maybe focusing on the same things like those old systems well it might be easier for Nora to get into that system maybe your team like stagnates a little bit in terms of their growth because everything is about getting Nora built into that I would actually like to see them try out some more niche ideas like there are solo harbor smoke on sunset is something I absolutely loved and I'd love to see what this team can do with more time to practice obviously Nora came in very very late for them but like last stage they only had five days and they came up with that like what can they yeah. do with more and, and it's also like how do you know Nora's even going to be able to fit the same shoes or, or even play in the same spots that Keensey did you know what I mean, you know what I mean? so it's just tough it's, it's a tough scenario but if there's one thing that I was saying before that I think will really add on to this is that they have tons of footage that they can watch and I think Jovi will do a good job of of counter stratting and, uh, and, and yeah, anti stratting in general. And honestly, like looking at a similar team, I actually think G2 was in a very similar position, right? Star player in Mary goes away and they have to bring in a more unknown player in Sarah. So I think like taking, looking at how that was dealt with where there was, you know, a couple of splits of trying to do the exact same thing. Maybe it doesn't go quite as well. Then there was also, let's just throw everything at the wall like we just saw in game number one. I think there is something to be said for actually really trying to revitalize the team, bring in new ideas, because it's not a one-for-one -one swap out between those two players. It never is going to be that. It's about how the team can build together a strong five squad uh, out of the, their new addition. Yeah, the time constraint is what, for me, worries me a little bit. Have they had enough time? But I'm also glad you mentioned Sunset, because these are the teams that have play Sunset True. and Freeze. They've played officials uh, on it already. So uh, are they ahead a little bit right now? Do you feel like Baby Bay maybe compared to the other teams? I mean, I guess we did just see G2 and Liquid play it, uh, but they've also had more time with it. Yeah, I think having more time on any map is going to be beneficial to you. And I think that the fact that they are not playing against a team that doesn't have the time on it, it won't matter in this series, but overall in the tournament, it will be important for them. It's a really complicated map. Like, I think there's so many, it's so small, but there's so many different ways to retreat or attack going ag aggressively up through mid that I think just understanding the timing, sort of not even the things that you learn, but the things that you passively intake and you know the angles and everything you have to be able to hold, I think it's a huge advantage, especially to have professional, uh, like, mattering games, not just scrims, like games that matter on a stage to qualify. That is such a big boon. Honestly, I've loved Sunset. Maybe we get to see Breeze. Uh, but first, earlier, Mika Fab's got a chance to sit down with Team SMG's uh, Alexi and... Uh, no, oh. we're going to spill the tea oh. with Athena, oh. I believe. <laughs> oh, we yeah, are. We, I, we pulled the hot talk. I didn't want to see that interview. I wanted to spill the tea, so that's what we're doing. <laughs> Honestly, uh, you love tea, so I'm looking I forward to see what tea is going to be spilled. Take a look at this. I'm here with EG, and today I'm sitting down with Lori, Thea, and Scary Shark 32 otherwise known as Nora, and we're gonna get to know them a little bit better. We're gonna be playing a game called Spill the Tea. <laughs> so you guys basically gave me facts about yourselves, and I have to guess which one is which. So I'm gonna start with the first one. I am afraid of, who is afraid of cruises? Who is it? Surely, yo, you, who? yo, don't leak by looking at it. I'm not <laughs> leaking. <laughs> This would be kind of ironic if it's Scary Shark 32, right? It would be. That would be so ironic. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna, I'm gonna think that this is Nora. Can you guys pass this over to her? I think that's that's Nora. All right, the next one we got. I played lacrosse. Ooh, that's a good one. <laughs> that's not me. 
I'm so unathletic. Is that? No, is it's that, not me. Not, I swear to God, it's not me. I don't, is this reverse psychology happening right here? It's not me. <laughs> okay. Wait, okay, I'm not gonna say it's not me. I swear. The, this reverse psychology is working because I'm gonna pass this one to Thea. Okay. See what right, happens. Okay. See how athletic she is? <laughs> All right, I didn't know what, what preem aiming was until I hit radiant. That's that so how mean. you hit radiant? No, I'm kidding. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so Lori, obviously you're the last one. I'm gonna Thank give you. this one to you. So I think I'm gonna, let me do one final. I'm a pretty crazy, I think that's so funny. <laughs> if that's you, that's gonna be so funny. I play with cross. Is this your final answer? I Are think you, you locking lock it in? in? I think I'm locking it in. Oh, yeah. I think I'm locking this okay. one in. Okay. What we got? Karina's locking it in. Um, All right. Out of three, how many do I get? Unfortunately. Oh no. Zero. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, for real? Wait, zero? Yeah. Oh my god. I'm gosh. so sorry. Should wait, we like okay. swap them yeah, to yeah, where? Okay. Okay, so who's afraid it of It worked. The reverse psychology. I'm afraid oh my of cruises. God, it worked. <laughs> Holy smokes. Oh my god. Wait, why are you afraid of I cruises? don't know. I feel like it's like, you know, an illogical fear, right? <laughs> but I just, I really, I don't know. I don't want to be stranded in the middle of the ocean. Oh you my know what gosh. I mean? <laughs> okay, that's fair. And you got Scary Shark on your team. Yeah, that's yeah. fair. That's fair. Yeah. Thank you so much, you guys. Thank you for joining me today. I'm so glad to have learned about these facts. And now we're going back to where we came from. Any of you guys afraid of cruises? I'm afraid of cruises. I, I really? actually, I, I'm just, I don't like the ocean, like way out there. <laughs> like a, as Nora would put it, sharks are scary. They are. Um, especially 32 of them. <laughs> I, I, I would be more scared of 32 sharks than I would be of 31 sharks, personally. Yeah, I, I, think, I think it's valid. <laughs> I think valid. one shark, I'm done. I, I'm just, yeah. The rest is just like a yeah, but excessive. like I, I always watch Shark Week and I was like, oh, if you just touch like their temples, they go unconscious or something. Yeah, let's I always wanted to try that. That's a thing. That sounds great. Yeah, uh, best I mean, word on the street I'm at least. Just, I'm just gonna go <laughs> in and, uh, and, and ask Not the question. Street. I wanna, <laughs> I wanna ask you guys. Uh, what, what are your, what is your biggest fear? You got any fears in game? Make it valid. In game, in game. Uh, falling off ascent. <laughs> and not being jet. Oh, I get it. I see what you're saying. Because that would be scary. It's, it's like floating, you're way up there. Yeah, floating, yeah. Floating, oh. floating. Yeah, thing. or like brim ults on Pearl and then the ceiling busts. Mine is, <laughs> mine is Icebox never coming back. I miss Icebox. I do miss Icebox. Bring Icebox back. Yeah. yeah. Oh, what mine would be. You're fearless. Yeah. No, I think I'm, yeah. pretty, I'm pretty fearless. Baby Bay is like, but sharks. everyone is scared of me. <laughs> okay. And there, there's no sharks. teams yeah. that you would scare you if you played against them? Oh, I'm not really a scary, uh, no, okay. scary individual. I, like, I, f I feel like I'm, you know, pretty pretty confident against we, them. We played against each other. Yeah, yeah actually, yeah. you know what? I am scared of one person. It's her. <laughs> okay. She's, she's I did too win. good. Fair she enough. beat me. I did win. She beat me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I did ah. win against Baby Bay. That's my that's my. You were IGLing place. too. Yeah, I was, I was, yeah. Literal yeah. Kohaibi, just shooting and IGLing. Oh, I'm, I'm not scared that of her. Good. I'm not she, I, I wouldn't say she was shooting, but she Yeah, yeah, I was not shooting at all. Not in the She was sabotaging my team really well. Yeah, I, I'm good at that. IGLing, I see how it goes. Know. I mean, Kamek was on my team, so I felt like I cheated a little bit, but I did win. I did win. You did. Yeah. Now we got to 1v1 each other and see who's the ultimate. I, you know, I, I, I'd probably do this. <laughs> uh, uh, all right, okay, let's bring it back to this game because uh, we did some hot takes earlier, you know. Uh, your hot take was actually EG related. Yep. So for the people that didn't see your hot take earlier, can you please just double down real quick about what you said uh, about EG. Definitely, yeah. EG's gonna win this series 2-0. Nora's gonna go crazy. Uh-huh. That's my hot take, yeah. Yeah, but that's it was, sweet. yours was even more than Oh yeah, that, they're gonna though. win the whole tournament, but I mean, the, my hot take oh, for this I was match. like, that, that's, oh. the way you said it there, that was pretty mild. Yeah, 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 yeah that was yeah. mild? The way you said it. Oh, okay. Right, okay, if, okay. if you've been like, if you had led with though, they're gonna win everything. Oh, they're gonna then win that is, everything, first of all. That is But they're also gonna 2-0 this next game. Okay. I. I think it's pretty spicy. You, you know, if they 2 owed, like if they 2 owed SMG, SMG would have lost half the maps in one day that they've lost all year. And oh, sorry, wow. but that is ridiculous. 
that can't happen, right? Yeah, in which case, I'll give you extreme heat for that. It may be a hot take. I may not be confident in it, but it is a hot take. Yeah. Also, I do. Th I it's so <laughs> it's so funny that like uh, like on Twitter, Potter's the one that predicted. If any team was to not win any game, yeah. EG, I, she's I still, so real. For I'm that. still laughing. I think she knows she's what she's so talking real. about a little bit. I you mean. just predicted them to win the whole thing. Hey, hey it's a hot hey, take. Okay, hey. okay, my bad. I didn't say it was a good one. In fairness, between the three of us and Potter, we do have a world championship. We do. Whoa. Okay. Yeah. I count that. That's true. Yeah, I Wait, count that. Yeah. yeah. Hold on. And an ignition series win. And an ignition series win. Yeah. And uh and Ludwig a tournament. Couple, yeah, a couple, yeah. a yeah. couple yeah. of yeah. great yeah. personalities. You're just not contributing to this. I'm, I'm in the team, <laughs> though, right? I, I, I'm on the team. Oh, all right, you're just yeah. here. You're having fun. Uh, okay, I've got, right. a, I've got a hot take. take. Give us your hot take. Um, I feel like I just I had a hot take, and now I've forgotten my hot take. Oh, my hot take? I think that if we see a scent, mm -hmm. that EG are going to run some old school EG triple initiator oh. comp to make Nora feel at home. Oh. Everyone's going to be initiating. I I, I don't want to <laughs> say it's a hot take. I want to say like I love Megusta. I love this. Yeah. I I actually really like that. I give you all three. Oh thank I'll you. I'll give That's you all the, the heats. Okay. I feel like I get the flavor of the mild, yes. but the heat of the extreme, that's perfect. <laughs> Maybe I just cooked up a, a strap for them. That's I don't just know. a genuine that good idea. Happening. I feel like What if it's just, just triple initiator idea. every map? No, she's been playing, she's been playing duelist in rank. You need a duelist. You can't just go <laughs> duelist list. There's no way. I uh, well my Unless hot you take. Have. Lori plays the sage. Teams in the past uh, used to play sage instead of the jet on ascent. I don't know. Uh, I've, Maybe I've, I'm I've cooking. I've heard about some good battle sages. <laughs> <laughs> Lori on, was name, the battle one. sage. Name one. <laughs> Uh, I, I'll give you my, uh, some of my hot takes as well. I reckon, uh, I reckon we're gonna get some pretty spicy trash talks in this game. Okay. I Ooh. think maybe not like okay. the the male level, but I think I'm expecting them to give it. Yeah. Who's the trash talker? I think they're gonna give it. Who's? I feel <laughs> no. I I would like to see them give it, but I also would would think that they have an opportunity. To. I want to see Nora roll in, just be like, welcome the first round <laughs> ace out of her chair, like headset flying off. She picks up her, her pet shark, you know, is holding it over her head. Throws it at the is enemy that, team. Is, <laughs> throws it at is it a shark? I don't know if they can do that. <laughs> is this a shark? Is that a shark? Yeah. No, that's... So she stands up and like... Oh, I mean, that, that could that be a That could be a shark. Yeah? Is that yeah. what yeah. a dog do? as well. Yeah, it could be a goldfish. <laughs> a, a it could gold be Pac-Man. It could be Pac... I think it's Pac-Man, actually. That's, that's more of a I feel like we anyway. need a segment where we come up with like player celebration, like really, like, you know the con. I'm convinced like, that really player specific. celebrations or walkouts. Oh, I think a walkout like class would be fire. We yeah. could do some sick ones. Any ideas off the well, bat? Well, the first thing I would bring back is the fennel, right? Like we gotta get the fennel rolls back in here. Oh, Come on, team! Oh. If you're watching, the festival, please. the festival, the festival, yeah yeah yeah, 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 yeah. If you were watching GC Champs last year, you remember the festival roll. What about you, baby? Shout out festival. Oh, we need the airplane back, you know? <laughs> we oh, need the airplane back. Home? I don't want that to happen, but yeah, the Boaster airplane was, was phenomenal. You send them home? That yeah, was yeah, that yeah. was <laughs> that was top selling, maybe top three sellies of all time. I mean, there's a lot of plushies on the tables there as well. I feel like you could work those in. I know like Nats likes the panda, yeah. the Aspas dog. Oh, there we go. I do think that the more so plushies are a competitive advantage. I think the more plushies you have, the, the more of a likelihood you win the game is. I think we should check the stat on that. So just distraction for the other team or something? No, or? you get to pet like imagine you miss a shot you start petting your your stuffed animal you're back in the zone tilt gone okay are you i, I don't think I they're allowed to throw them over maybe you just, <laughs> just i wish just lob it just chuck it yeah oh we have matt vetoes it is ready so let's find out where we're gonna be headed in this match between evil geniuses and team smg so we're starting match selection process for eg versus smg uh, the higher seed of this uh, match is EG, so start choosing if you want to be Team A or Team B. I would like to be Team B. Team B, okay. So SMG is Team A. Uh, SMG starts banning a map. I didn't listen. Breeze, okay. So Breeze uh, ban for EG. We will ban Bind. Bind, okay. Uh, first map pick for SMG. Lotus, okay. So Lotus, side on Lotus for EG. We'll start attack on Lotus. 
Attacking, okay. Uh, map two for EG. We will pick Haven. Haven, side on Haven for SMG. Defending. Defending. Uh, the next set hmm. of bands, uh, SMG bends a map. We have Ascent, Sunset, or Split. Ascent. Sunset, okay. So Sunset, uh, EG bends, we have Ascent or Split. Ascent, okay. So split is the decider. Uh, side on split for SMG. Defense. Defense. Okay. So, so uh, I'm gonna run it back so we we get things right. Uh, the first set of bands were SMG Breeze, EG Bind, pick were SMG picked Lotus, EG picked Attack. Uh, EG picked Haven and SMG starts defending. The second set of, of bands were Sunset and Asset. Sunset for SMG, EG, uh, uh, Band Ascent. The side is split, SMG starts defending. Is that right? Is that right? Okay, good luck, have fun. has never lost a single game. Uh, it's gonna be tough, especially like, it's crazy. Like EG are obviously coming together, brand new player right before this event. Team SMG were a brand new team formed at the start of this year and they never skipped yeah. a beat. They have been dominating the entire APAC region this whole <laughs> year long, but this will be the test, right? You're coming to the international stage. How can you perform now in a land environment, right? Against new teams that you aren't as familiar with and against the best of the best around. I honestly can't imagine what it's like being EG going up against a team that hasn't lost all year. I mean, this is, <laughs> this is like a scenario that almost never happens in any region or any game, you know? Like, it's gotta be so intimidating. But yeah. also, like, EG, they're playing almost with, like, no pressure, in a sense, yeah. right? Because, of course, you do have this roster change coming in. They're going to want to try their hardest. But at the same time, I feel like that's almost a bit of a freeing feeling before you load into the server. Like, you can do some crazy stuff, right? And just hold no strings, you know, just go all in. I'm also interested to talk about the, the map vetoes we just saw, because obviously for Team SMG, they have so many maps they could go to. So many maps are undefeated on. But I'm really, I, I like the fact that they went for the Lotus because EG's Lotus haven't looked that great. So they've actively picked their opponent's weak map in this. Yeah, I, and I really like their, like the, the comps that they play on these maps. Like I really like their split comp. I think it's ahead of its time. And like, it feels like they kind of are ahead of the meta in a way. So I'm, I'm really excited to see SMB play this. I, I, I like the comps that they play a lot. Yeah, I mean, at the same time, heading in, into map two of Haven, that's a, an area where EG performed so well up against V1 in the Americas finals. Uh, so I have a lot of faith in them. We'll see how they can adjust and what it ends up look like, looking like for them. But I think especially how they're able to hold sites on defense, uh, you know, sort of like playing to flood out with smokes on sites. So they can get players onto the site very, very quickly and never allow V1 in that situation to get a plant down. That's the type of play I love to see on Haven when you're fast
fast rotating, flooding out onto the site, pre-taking it before they can actually plant the spike. EEG have a very clear idea of how they want to play their game on the majority of their maps. They have the system in place, just will they gel? That's the question. E even on attack, too. Like I, I like the way they manipulate rotations, and, they, and they're not stuck on just going to one site or just rushing one site. Yeah. I like how they play the rotations, and it, it sets them up later in the rounds. I mean, this is the thing. We know the maps now, and we were theorizing about how Nora is going to fit uh, into this team. So for Lotus, you think it's a good idea for us to just one for one slot in here? Yeah, I, I, I think so. I think that's going to be the approach from EG, right? And they're going to use all the utility they have to support Nora on the entry of like Ray stuff getting into the site itself. And honestly, you just puppet mask that. They, uh, yeah, yeah, brand new IGL. Now you get to do a little, <laughs> a little, a little puppet control in this one. I will say though, I feel like. Raze is a hard duelist to just pick up out of nowhere, you know. So I'm hoping, which probably is the case, Nora has reps. She's been grinding, and ranked yeah. and stuff like that. But it is tough to just re like get those blast backs down if you haven't played it before. And yeah, just knowing all those lineups in general, like yeah. those nade lineups you have to know now, especially with the, the Raze nade being nerfed. You know, so uh, mm -hmm. we'll see if she did her homework. It's also not like Nora, the second after the finals was won, started practicing with this team. This yeah. is also yeah. a very late last addition, uh, last minute for EG here. The the odds are completely stacked up against them, but they have always been stacked up against them. I'm going to keep rooting against them because I think that's what works for EG. Oh, they're winning, yeah. buddy. <laughs> oh, they're winning, yeah. buddy. 2 0. Oh, oh you're, you're carrying that on. You're carrying that on. Uh, I will want to say that on the other side for Team SMG, the last time they played uh, Lotus, they played the Fade. I feel like uh, we don't see that very often as we head into the Prime Gaming Agent Select. We're going to get some clarity uh, on the agents we're going to get, but also where Nora is going to... Wait, 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 no, no, no. No. Wait, can we get production? Can are we they hover, Are they this hovering is, or are uh, they locked in? Yeah, you know, they hovered or locked in? I mean, okay, in? the Rainer has been played before. They are they have, hovered or locked in? That's they have the played the Rainer before. I have, we have seen it, but what hey, the look, hell is they've this? They've got, they've got it's slashes, in. they've got smokes and neon. There's no way. Listen, I yo, listen, the last time I saw a no smoke cop play, was old phase with me, Marv, Corey, Zachary, Ruckus, and we had no coach. What is going on? That was what the last time happening? I've seen it. I've never seen this oh in an official. God. And we did it in scrims, and you know what? All right, let's just get into it. What stops this is an op. You just need to get an op up. Okay, but what are the win conditions, baby bae? For the duelist call? Yes. You gotta shmeeg. You, you, you gotta, <laughs> this is the one time where you gotta run it down. Completely shmeeg out. Uh, I am in <laughs> complete disbelief, and I want to know what Doug and Athena, <laughs> your cast is for today. Good Think luck. about this. Thank you so much, Yinsi. Yeah, uh, Athena, I normally have really eloquent words to like break stuff down and talk through things, but honestly, four duelists on Lotus, I'm going to leave that to you. That I one's all yours. I am just so excited for this. Like, I have no idea. I had no idea they are going to pull this out. <laughs> I saw the scream, and I literally started screaming because this comp is so explosive, and you have to see how they're going to play against such a good comp that's normally on Lotus. Uh, I think we're going to get a lot of this. We're already seeing them fight for a main control and deny some of that space. I just don't no, I mean, I don't know how you hold up against Come something on. like this over an extended period of time. How deep does this bag of tricks go? The opener already going in favor of Camille. That's going to help. Yeah, I mean, getting these opening picks is going to be so, so important because, again, on that defense side, they don't have any information with right. this duelist comp. Their biggest info is that Cypher cam, and setting him up on a site is just more than enough for this team. But they can compete and contest for these A mains, for these B mains. They can contest so hard, and it's so hard for EG to fight back. Yes, they have the util. Yes, they have the info. But what are you going to do against all this firepower? See if they can figure it out again. We're seeing all this pressure that's been applied at the beginning of the round. They try to swing out into it. The paranoia is not going to connect. Camille oh, oh, oh. will fall, and they've got a little bit of breathing room here. Yeah, taking the space. EG definitely needed to use their util there. A oh. little bit of a miss on the paranoia, but it doesn't really matter because they're falling back. They use that uh, super info and set up Scary Shark left. in such a good spot. Nobody knows that she's there. Just so far up, calling the rotations over. We'll see if they can continue to settle this. They and Starbound both weak, taking a little bit of damage. And you've already got Shirazi so far One up. The first made. will fall. And inevitability, unfortunately, is she will beat her demise. SMG, get the pistol. 
Yeah, I mean, such a good round overall. EG already kind of finding the holes, stuck. though, within right. this comp. They already took advantage of taking that space, taking away information from the other team. And I think that that's kind of going to be their advantage. But SMG, of course, just taking that firepower, taking their ones and using this duelist <laughs> comp to the best of their ability. You see these mechanical ba battles, and they're winning them. I mean, when you're hitting like that, I guess it doesn't really matter. <laughs> uh, there's a wise, as the wise philosopher of our day, Bren, once said, it's just an FPS game. You get shot in the head, you die. <laughs> so there may be something to it as, of course, uh, we get the ever beloved tech pause. As soon as we figure out what's going on, we'll get you all into the action. But if you are just joining us, uh, it's not a mistake. There are four duelists on the <laughs> side of SMG uh, on the opening of Lotus. The pistol went their way, and now we get uh, an involuntary pause in the action to figure out um, what's going on. Yeah, I mean, I'm just, I'm honestly a huge fan of this comp. No, you're I'm not. I'm such no, a you're big not. fan. Dude, <laughs> on defense, how are you going to fight? If you're the attack side, how are you going to fight against this four duelist comp that has the stun, the nade, the rain of flash, the phoenix flash? Like, the phoenix flash is one of the best flashes in the game. Sure, 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 sure. <laughs> I, I do think, I, I agree with you. If EG decide that they want to fight and, like, brawl this out, ain't no way. Right, like that that's a miserable thing to try to navigate and figure out. But I do think the nature of uh, Lotus being three maps, it's gonna allow them a lot more room to work. They can poke and prod a little bit, just like we saw Scary Shark do in the previous round. She was up so deep before they even got caught. Um, so I, I think if, if EG and if Thea in the calling role continues to lean into that, it's going to be really tough for SMG. Yeah, I mean, it's actually crazy that EG picked up on it that fast, yeah. especially Nora. I mean, she's the new addition to this roster, and she's already taking her own, like, abilities and pushing into that. We know she played Info Initiator before. She played on that Sky, and she's kind of using that role to understand the map and adapt herself. Even on the race, she's working up into their spawn, calling her team back. I mean, that was just perfect. And I think if we do see more of that, I do see the huge weakness in SMG. Yeah. Uh, I am being told there was a minor audio issue. I was also told that we'd be heading back into things shortly, but I'm not going to lie to you good people at home who are joining us. That was a that was about a minute or so ago. So, so I've been lying. lied to, and inevitably I I'm lying to the people at home wow. as well. Yes. Wow. I'm going to keep that on note. <laughs> Let's not do a tally of how many times <laughs> I've lied I'm scratching it in <laughs> right here. <laughs> Back into the action again. SMG won the pistol. You see it as far as the buy plays out. EG with nothing really to work with. Facing this four duelist comp. And it's going to be a treat to see how things play out. Yeah, the second round coming in here. We do have pistols on the side of EG, obviously. Interested to see how this goes, kind of trying to get as many guns down. But we do have SMG still taking that aggressive option that they have. They know they can take this space, and they are not scared to take it. I mean, look at how close they are with this Phoenix Flash. Oh, no. Flash. There's the flash, the dog gets cleared, and the kills oh come through just like that. One enemy An absolute slaughter. That is insane. Again, okay, so here's why I love this comp. All right, I'm going to be real. <laughs> if you're Sky, you got to use Util to take space, right? Sure. If you're Phoenix and you hear Util, you just you're just going to flash. Swing. Sure, and you sure, swing. sure, sure. So you can take the timing. I mean, it's it's mm -hmm. going to be down to EG kind of making sure that they can do the contact plays in all the right places and finding the holes, but we'll see how it goes. I, I do think, too, it, it you know, when you think about it, if you're going to run a comp like this, we mentioned it at the beginning, you're not going to get a main. You're just not, right? Like, it's the brawliest spot on the map. You're facing four duelists. You know where that's where a lot of the action is going to go. So I will be very curious to see if EG continue to try to establish presence on this area of the map because that's sledding uphill. Yeah, I love this Odin map trying to counter that aggressive push from SMG. And it did actually work, tacking Shiraji down all the way to 25 HP. But again, it's just this Viper putting up so much pressure. But SMG doesn't care. They still have three people here set up for the push on a main. Right, they took a little bit of damage, but they can still control that area of the map, which was really their objective the whole time. We'll, yep. see, we'll see where they go from here. You've got the trip watching B, Alexi getting tagged a little bit. Feeling some of that pressure as the dog clears up. EG with plenty of time, plenty of options here as well. Yeah, successfully pulling those rotates from a main, they are gonna come back to try to retake that space. And like I said, these contact plays are gonna be so important because any util from each team is gonna set off a trigger. Thea getting that first kill. And what an amazing contact up. They pulled those players. Such a good, good rotation. Where do they go from here though? Because SMG is already all rotated. I mean, all members of the squad have posted up towards A. They're gonna try to funnel in through the door. And this is not a fake. This is a commitment. They've all pushed their way forward. The smokes are going down. 
Canary here watching utility whiz by. She tries to find the opener on the scary shark. It does. They're falling apart. Myrna, this oh is very God. dangerous. Can they stabilize? Can they equalize here? 2v2, just a pistol in the hands of Alexi as the spike goes down. Spike planted. Yeah, the defensive hold was so impressive on those sheriffs and those vandals. Like, that is not what you want. And then 2v2 here, Shirazi on low HP, but so is Power Pixel. See a little bit of mind games played as Shirazi tapped the door, but decides to go all the way around. Footsteps heard, they are wanting to try to catch him. It's actually Shirazi who finds the first. Oh that Sprout goes horribly sideways as SMG win the bonus. SMG taking the full ability of their mechanical skills and putting it in use. That defensive side was insane. You know how we were talking about finding holes in their comp? Yeah, well, faking, putting pressure, pulling rotates, they did so good in the early game, EG, they did. But the end game was so hard because SMG were ready. They fully rotated. They knew they had to hold down that site because Cypher Trips were set up on BNA, right. on BNC. Right. They didn't have a problem. They knew that they had to fight this. And look at this crossfire, such a good crossfire. Everyone setting up for each other, taking angles together. This is the hive mind that the desk was talking yep. about, and we can see in action right here. Right back into the action. You see the buy for EG is not great. Two marshals and then pistols the rest of the way. Meanwhile, there's uh, a much more expensive and much more powerful weapon on the other side. Value already found with the op. Oh my goodness, they're creeping up a main too. It's not just fighting for the space. Look how far up Kimiyu is already. Yeah, Come such deep the info. They have to take these aggressive lines to get info. And they're kind of using it to their advantage as well because yep. we have the Neon rotating off. Reyna has the full line at A. Like, there's nothing else that they need to watch other than that B and C. The heavy stack is great. Like, such a good read, too. EG finding themselves in a bit of a, of, of a, a slugfest early on. Perhaps not what... I mean, there's no way they could have expected oh. that. You see the flashes come through. They really had no shot. It was lighter weaponry, but again, going into this four duelist comp is going to be really difficult. I will I will say this, though. Is I, I would love to get your thoughts on this because we've had the opportunity of seeing Thea develop over these last couple of years. She's now finding herself in an IGL role for EG. I mean, this feels like a massive test, and not, not even necessarily because it's four duelists, but because as a caller, you're the one who's tasked with figuring out how the heck do you navigate this? Yeah, I mean, as an IGL, definitely the timeout coming in makes sense because you need to talk this out with your team, with your yeah. coach. You need to figure out exactly what is going wrong and where you can abuse this comp because, yes, the defensive side is like duelist and you don't expect it to be good, but they have so much futile to deny executes. They have so much futile to deny pushing or anything that's towards either of the extremities that they have. So Thea as an IGL, she needs to know and understand the push and pull concept for on this map. Because like you said earlier, Lotus is three sites. There's no way that they can do all this on every single one of the sites. So right. they need to figure out, especially like where they're fighting, how to pull rotators, how to use that advantage of information. Maybe the Viper wall lurking up, mm. things like that. Things that they can abuse to kind of set up EG for success, I think is something that they really, really need to start implementing. I mean, earlier we had the Viper using Odin, like trying to deny right. a game that way, but like you also need to take space. Right? right, instead of just, yeah, exactly. trying to deny yeah. it and then not really working out. I do like the adaptations we're seeing out of SMG too, because remember for, the, for really all four rounds that we've had so far, they've been hellbent on fighting for a main. You see it on the minimap as that timer is unfortunately frozen once more. Um, they're leaning towards C this time. So you're trying to play really a step ahead of things off the timeout. Maybe they're going to try to hit C early. They're ahead of it already. Yeah, for sure. I mean, finding the mm. Cypher is like kind of a big deal, I think, sure. against this comp for EG. Finding the Cypher is going to tell you where they're probably not setting up as right, many Right, leaning on the other it. side. Exactly, leaning on the other side. I think a lot of this will also come down to getting the right calls. Like maybe yeah. gambling, right? Sure, right? sure, sure, sure. Like if you gamble towards A and the Cypher's there, you're like, just go. Free. Just yep. Free. Or as free, or as, free as you could uh, possibly get in a situation like that. Um, there is another tech pause, uh, and we don't know what it is. But again, once we figure it out, we will keep you all informed. EG find themselves uh, in a bit of trouble here early on as they come in to the biggest stage Game Changers has to offer all year as the number one seed, gone through the tumultuous couple of weeks of who's going to fill in the spot uh, as Keensey is no longer on the squad. What are they going to do with this? And they jump their way into this as the opening match. Again, you know, we've kind of alluded to it a little bit here, Athena, but this, this feels like 
a really good opportunity to learn what you're about and what you're made of. Yeah, for sure. I mean, coming into LAN is such a big, big deal for a lot of players. Sure. It is a completely different beast. I have spoken about this before. I'm a huge advocate for playing differently at LAN, not differently as in your play style changes, right. but the way that you are as a player. Because one, mm -hmm. the sound isn't as good as when you're at home right, alone yeah. in your room with no other sounds bouncing around. Like, everything is so different. The energy that you feel is different. So coming into it, when you do have a roster change like that, it's it's so interesting to see how the dynamics then play out. Because you have a new player on your team, you have a new energy, new dynamic within the team, and you're playing at LAN. So you have a whole new energy coming into it. You're on stage, you have people watching, you have different sounds, you have crazy, you can see the opponent on the other side. Like it's such a huge, huge difference. Back into the edge action once more we find ourselves as EG find themselves down 0-4. Uh, it's really been quiet sliding the entire time. Once again, we're seeing the Viper wall towards A. We're seeing the lean from the attack towards A. Well, SMG guessed on the other side, and they're wrong. Yeah, SMG kind of getting that space for free. They are going to keep walking up. They did have an early rotate from Reyna. Walking up to that C line, they leave Raze, and they're going to go ahead and do that heavy stack. So this is kind of what I was talking about, where the Cypher is just playing off playing off her trips, mm -hmm. she's bing chilling, you know? And then you have three people setting up towards this B site. Phoenix is all the way pushed up to that door. It's such a heavy setup, and this 1-3-1 one, one setup, they can fast rotate. Yeah. Very, very quick with it. You see the trip causing problems already. As they eventually managed to get past it. The span coming through, though, out of an area impatience. So rotation's already coming over from the defense. Just like I said, these rotations are so key, Doug. They're so key to this. First run it back on mine. And it seems like they're going to try to just flood out and take these fights. When Again, when you're going up against these duelists, it could be a problem with Scary Shark finding one, finding oh. a second. As Power Pixley counters with it. They and Power Pixley both so weak. And Airy not much better off. Four HP as the spike ticks away. Flash. Patience shown from SNG for just a moment. They strike at just the right time and it all crumbles. Starbound left alone, a 1v2. Remember, an airy weak. The spam not connecting initially. Alexi's gotten it to half. That's three quarters. Alexi's gonna stick it the whole way and that's another round for SMG. Oh my goodness. EG so close to success. They figured out the small key, but hopefully these next few rounds, they're gonna take that advantage and they're gonna take that knowledge and put it into the next map. I mean, SMG just are doing whatever they want against CG at this point. I mean, I think, again, we're seeing some of the dynamics of this of this quadruple duelist comp. We need a more succinct way to say that, by the way. Quadruple oh, duelist? That's yeah, just a mouthful. Uh, <laughs> wait, if you get down on site, you, you almost, you can't fight on site, right? You, you have to get the spike down, and then you've got to play far off enough to where you're not going to get in these scraps, but close enough to where you can defend the spike. It's a really difficult situation that you find yourself in. Yeah, I mean, putting pressure on this B main is really good. But in those post lines, they're brutal. Scary Shark trying to get that entry, but she gets caught out. Oh my goodness, this is a one for one trade on every single part of this map. This full execute has gone shredded to bits. Oh, they've committed the Seekers. Pushing forward into spawn. They have the spike in tow. They're spotting at least one, the Cypher. And Aerie, feeling some of the pressure, has to take a step back. Once again, SMG with the quick rotates. They've got reinforcements Point coming around just remaining. behind them, but Aerie might just do it all Point on her own. A. Yeah, both kills goes down. A 6-0 lead for SMG early on. And then remember, they've already called a timeout. I can't see the yeah, unit. this is looking rough for EG right now. I mean, it is so hard to take advantage of where they're pushing, where they're gamble stacking. One I think on these post remaining. plants, like, you have to push your spawn. But what are you going to do when you're running into the Cypher just sitting, holding down sight? There's yes. not much else that you can do. I, I really think EG needs to push through and understand that they need to be super aggressive back. Like, they are just letting SMG play their own no game against them. Yeah, especially if you do want to lean one way and you want to play slow, you've got to understand that you have two duelists yeah. who are going to flank you, who are going to flank you and apply pressure on the opposite side of the map. This really feels like EG is shell-shocked right now. They walked into this stage, and they didn't really know what to expect, but what's hitting them right now is, at least for now, more than they can handle. Yeah, and they have to deal with the nerves of LAN and how to come back, and it's a new roster, but Scary Shark does not care. Showstopper online, pin invested, space gained. But again, they've been here before, and they got caught while trying to control the site. 
What is their approach? Once again, all four members playing close, none of them playing really far off. Yeah, I mean, such a good Viper out there, taking advantage of that sp space that they got, not letting them do that fast flood that they have been taking and abusing the pushes. At the end of the day, they don't have Util to re-clear site. All they can do is flood and take fights, but not looking bad. Scary Shrek with four, and they finally get a round. A huge round from Scary Shrek. And, you know, I, I've been waiting for the opportunity to talk to you about this, and this is perfect as Scary Shark finds herself top fragging for the squad. You and I had a chance to talk about Scary Shark and this roster change, and you, you were sharing a little bit about what it's been like for you and your squad scrimming against them up until this point. Yeah, I mean, mechanically, so far from what we've seen in scrims, she's been amazing. I mean, she's definitely held her own. She's shown that switching roles is not going to be a problem for her. Mechanically, she is insanely talented, and she's gifted, and she really showed that. A big round and perhaps a spark that they need to get the ball rolling because it's been anything but that up until this point for North America's number one seed. And you start to see some of that adaptation. Starbound playing really far back in spawn, expecting some of the pressure, but if they continue to fight into this A main area, it's gonna continue to be difficult. We're already seeing some of the results of that. Scary Shark with the counter. It seems like EG may have finally found some space. Taking a step back, Empress online. Three on the round already and looking for more. You've already got to run it back, which was the second in as many rounds, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, I mean, this remaining. is such an insane way Spike to down kind of a. round this round up. EG was looking so good. They were like, you guys aren't going to bully us in A main anymore, but... And then they did. They, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> they and did. then that happened. <laughs> oh, man, this is this is looking rough for EG. I mean, I, I think that with more confidence, they can definitely do more, but what are you going to do against stuns, flashes, walls. Reyna's just like dismissing around, like taking her fights. Yeah. It's just so hard to kind of get back into that like method of yeah. how to play and how to kind of contest this. But again, we see them setting up for the four A main strat again, taking this fast. They're not scared. I mean, they might not be scared. It's just not really finding value. Nice opener up from Starbound here. But SMG have played this beautifully. I love the plan that they had coming into this. They're executing it to perfection. They're playing with confidence, with boldness, and it's proving to be way oh too much as Neri continues to farm. God, we were talking about Neri earlier and how good she is, and putting her on this Cypher roll is just showing how strong she is alone on the site. It's just been un an unbelievable performance up until this point. And they really know signs of slowing down anytime soon. EG managed to get the spike down again. They got the lockdown invested, and it was a little bit into it here too, so the timing may work out if nothing else. Really, really good timing. Really good timing of that all. Everything was great. Reyna's getting caught out in that KJ all, and we have Shirazi left in a 1v3 trying to make things happen. And EG kind of figuring out that, hey, Cypher's kind of weak site. And they're being faster about it too, yes. which I think goes back to what some of what you were saying yeah. earlier, right? Like you've got to play with this with confidence. You have to understand there's going to be flanks. You've got to commit to it and, and do so quickly as MasterCard Thrifty comes through in favor of EG. Once again, a desperate need to get the ball rolling. And then one other thing I just very quickly want to mention, you wouldn't really expect it given how the Puffles these really this half is gone. But the money for SMG, it's not like they had a fat bankroll at the end of that round. Yeah, uh, They mean, might still be able to buy, but it, it isn't like they have they're not max or anything like exactly that. like they they still have to figure out their economy i mean it's looking pretty rough actually they are going to have a little bit of half armor seeing if they are going to full commit to that buy they do have the neon ult so it'll be okay they'll be able to sub out some some guns some weapons for one another but again like eg kind of hopefully they figured it out by now like as soon as they play that thrifty round they see what happens they they should be able to kind of be like okay i see it now we find Cypher, we hit. We don't find Cypher, they're probably pushing us. <laughs> like, you know right, what I mean? Right. So uh, it's going to be really interesting to see how, if they can adapt it. And they have the cabbages, they have the sky cabbages, they have the omen TP. They could do so much with this right now. And they could abuse the fact that they don't have any. Like, imagine omen TPing into a different site after right. putting pressure aiming. Right. Yeah. Like, especially with how SMG is playing. Like, they're just fast rotating, right? right. Yeah, they'll be ahead of it the whole way. Yeah. Yeah, uh, another tech pause. I'm being told this time it's uh, it's comm issues uh, between the players, something not uh, working as intended. So once again, we will keep you all updated. We'll get it figured out. We'll get back into the action 
Uh, it seems like EG have started to find some stable footing and perhaps starting to get some semblance of a read uh, on the game. But again, I want to give all the kudos I possibly can to SMG because they've shown up to a big stage. They throw the biggest curveball uh, that we've seen on the international stage potentially ever. Yeah. I mean, not just game changers, ever, and potentially. It. Yeah, and they're freaking killing it. I mean, they're they're executing it to perfection. Yeah, you didn't believe, by the way. You're right. I just want to let right. you guys know that he did not believe yeah. in the four duelist comp. You're, yeah, I mean, you're right, and we shouldn't encourage this. <laughs> <laughs> I want to see more of this. What do you mean? This is awesome. Oh, my gosh. All smiles on the SMG side here. I think, again, like... <sighs> There's just so much to unpack here. Yeah. There's still a few rounds left for EG. They can kind of bring back the momentum, try to get the last few rounds, try to make it a 7-5 half, see where it goes from there. But again, like, I can't stop talking about this SMG comp. Like, I am gushing about this. It is so good. And it seems to be working. Uh, it seems like we're jumping, jumping back into the action. Uh, as we were just talking, EG managed to put together a thrifty round win. They seem to be getting uh, a read on what's going on here. We'll see if the pace continues, how they choose to adjust. While on the side of SMG, see the buy, not great. Uh, Kamiyu deciding to go for Vandal, no armor. And you've got Kohibi, Kohibi, excuse me, who's got the ult. You imagine that will come online at some point. The persistence, this time it's actually really interesting. They, they threaten the fight A main, but they don't commit to it. Really, other than what, uh, a nade? At the beginning? Yeah, I mean, faking that pressure is so important. I feel like EG is now going to think, like, hey, they're doing the fast pressure A right. again. Like, this is the reaction that they're trying to do. But, <laughs> oh my goodness, Kohaibi is here with her ult, ready to frag out. The finger guns find no value. Oh, no. Lori's getting the kill. Aneri's getting pushed. You've got Seekers. You're paranoid. But the utility is just so freaking good right now. Cypher finding more value, getting away. And, yeah, you've lost the sight, but you've preserved your life. My goodness, EG finally taking advantage of that site, but can they take advantage of the post plant? And Neri just getting free damage in on Scary Shark on site. That's not what you want. It's still a 4v3. They're kind of playing these really good crossfires on site, but the flash, oh no. You gotta be careful here because it's not planted for the spam for mound. It's planted far deeper. If you don't have the utility to really deny this, you're just gonna get the defuse happening in your face. That's exactly what happens. Sarban has to go forward and Alexi's got the defuse. Exactly what you're saying, Doug. Like, how is this team playing two people on site, two people off site? For a second, it looked like a really good crossfire, and then they just fell off. That's a really interesting choice. I mean, you completely split up the site. You had two players playing for their lives and two players playing off. That's not what you want to see. You do not want to crumble in that kind of situation, especially when you finally got the site for so much damage and you're in a number advantage. You wonder here, too how some of that plays out, right? Because something as small as where you're planning the spike can seem really insignificant, but matter a lot in the grand scheme of things. As everything is happening, those are things that can prove to be the difference maker. We've jumped right into the action. We've missed a couple of kills. Uh, and it seems like SMG is still up. Uh, the maybe fourth, run it back of the half, third, fourth, I don't know. I think we missed more of the round than we actually saw, because that's how fast it was. Did you see what happened? Because I didn't see what happened. Nope. <laughs> okay, Alexi popping her ult in the middle. Of the she did not care. She popped her ult. She zoomed. She did what she had to do. And on that Phoenix, she is just on fire. These players are playing so good. I mean, look at this. She just gets her ult, immediately pops it. The reaction on this is insane. And they've done a and you, we really haven't had a chance to talk about it, given how well everything else is going. We're, I mean, the, the length of things that SMG are doing correctly is, is just absurd at this point. Uh, but we haven't really talked about the fact that they've been prioritizing getting the orbs into Alexi so that they can farm these run it back. Yeah, these are so, so OP. I mean, Phoenix ult is so good, especially now that it's, you know, less orbs than most alts in the game. Right. It's just such a good advantage to have. You get a second life, and Shirazi's fighting up, gets a trade, gets traded. Kimiyu does not care. She is fighting all the way up. This is a war zone at A main almost every single time they try taking it. And it's a war zone in front of them. It's a war zone behind them, too. <laughs> Right, because once again, we find ourselves in a position where you have two members from SMG that are hot to trot on the flank, and EG find themselves trapped. Right, it's not necessarily safe to go forward. That's the only real option you have. Maybe they break panel and they try to rotate B, but they're committing to A once more. 
Yeah, I mean, not knowing how many people are behind them as well is always a scary factor, but they do get that first kill. Alexi kind of stabbing the box, trying to oh. get hers. <gasps> a 2v2. How is EG going to play this to win this? Alexi still healthy. Well, not much longer. First shot comes through an Aerie who has been an outrageously bright spot for SMG amidst all of the other bright spots. Finds herself in a 1v2. Waiting for the tap. There's a swing. Scary Shark cleans him up, and it's a 9-3 half in favor of SMG. Oh, no. 9-3 curse. <laughs> what do you think? Switching sides. Uh, I, I, I don't believe in that mess. <laughs> you I, don't I, believe? No, okay. no, no. Uh, I don't believe in that mess. It's well done by EG to kind of salvage what they could and, and get their three. Again, you know, we talked about this a little bit. Scary Shark looks good. We're going to throw it down to the desk to break down that first half. That four duelist comp, they'll have plenty to talk about. Oh, that we do, Doug and Athena. I'm just going to jump straight into this. Ender and Baby Bay, four duelists come. Team SMG, go. Yeah, forget the first half. Let's talk <laughs> how do they make attack work. It's not going to be easy, but this is what I cooked up with. Rate it for me. You have Cypher mm -hmm. Cage to get the rubble cross, similar to like a oh, Viper, yeah. Viper Orb, right? <laughs> and then you also have ridiculously cheap ultimates, right? Your Phoenix ult is six orbs, and that's what I want them to farm for. So every run, Cypher can do some Lurk stuff over towards A, and then farm farm for C and B orbs, your Phoenix ulting every other round. And then out of Fair. your smokes, your Phoenix flash, Reyna flash comboing. So you can't break it or you get full <laughs> flash by the Phoenix and you can't look away. When you turn back, it'll be Reyna blind. That's yeah. what I got. Yeah, and, and when you're scaling into sights, you use the neon wall to get in and then you use the, the Phoenix wall to block off every single choke, especially around B. You know, you're blocking <laughs> heaven, you're blocking breakable, you're blocking block of the connector dude this is this is crazy it, it's absolutely crazy is this a five five uh, team hitting side kind of situation you don't want to see any lurks any sort of uh I, so Earth I think you could actually do a little bit of buddy system, like walking up B, because like if you can get Phoenix into a position, whether it's like out next to Rebel flashing through a smoke, or like that B corridor onto B site, Phoenix Flash can be effective. But I think like Phoenix Flash trying to go into the C site is not going to be useful at all. So I could see him trying to like go up through B and then use that door to split into C or, or take space solo into B. And on the other side, this is the first time we've ever seen this comp ever played in VCT, but Baby Bay, how do you deal with this if you're EG? How do you counter this? You have to stop the early aggression. And here's the problem is that when you're playing against a Neon on this map, the Neon can take A space without getting hit by Omen Flash, without getting hit by Nade. And you know what? With the Nade nerfs on top of it, it actually doesn't like really kill you anymore unless you stand directly on it. So I actually think if they decide to fight A, they're going to have a really hard time. There's so much good util to re-clear with the Neon Sun and the, and the Phoenix <laughs> Molly too. Oh, it's wild. We are having so much fun over here. And uh, Doug and Athena, I hope you guys are having just as much fun as we are. Thank you so much, Jinsu. Yeah, I, I mean, we're having a blast. I don't know I'm that we can say about... So much fun. Uh, yeah, I mean, I don't know that we can say <laughs> the same about EG. Uh, um, but we're, we're having a good time. I mean, I'd be having fun, you know? Maybe? We'll see how it is. <laughs> okay, all good, because who knows? This is defense side, and of course, we were talking about this earlier, this defensive side comp should be putting in the work. We have the double senti set up towards C. Viper's going to be playing that floater. We have KJ Util that, this is, that SMG has to watch out for, make sure they break before they take anything. And they're playing so interesting, just sitting at I mean, seeing if the other team is taking any pressure, but nothing. Yeah, they're, they're like doing a bit of the same on the other side. I, I, I like this from EG, but also on the other side, they don't really have any other choice, right? We talked about how much A main is such a, a battleground, as, as you so eloquently put in the first half. It's going to be the same when they're on attack, and that's why they were playing so far back. But now SMG pushing oh forward. The hot hand's in her lap to take the third fight, get another kill with the Ghost. We're already, by the way, more than halfway through to the next uh, run it back in the first round of the half. It's another round in favor of SMG. EG looks shell-shocked, they look stunned, and it's only one map. You know, who knows what's going to happen on the second map, yeah, but for I Lotus, mean, they're in trouble. It's just so hard to understand what they were trying to set up for that round. They were playing like this weird 2-2-1, two, two, but then they decided to play for Tree, but it was way too late because they're already up and in sight. They have to be super fast at adapting to this explosive gameplay. They cannot wait for them to show them what they're doing. Right. They got to figure it out. They have Uto. They have info. They need to figure out what the other team is doing and take that to their advantage. Well, folks, I have good news for you. <laughs> we've uh, we've got another tech pause. Ooh, a tech pause. Another one. Yeah. Damn. Uh, again, don't know what it is, but we will we will keep you all informed. Uh, I want to talk a, a little bit more again about the previous round that we just saw and kind of the setup and the nature of of what EG have to figure out.
right? Because again, you've got this freaking death ball that's yeah. just going to be running at your face, yeah. dumping utility and just full wide swinging everything. Yeah. I, I mean, it, again, I, I love getting the opportunity to, to cast with you because I get to like pick your brain and get your insight on situations like this. What? How are you handling this on defense? I mean, for sure, you need to play either aggressive or if you are going to be playing back, you need to be constantly getting that information. Sure. You can't do what EG just did, where they had the double senties towards this side of the map. They had them towards C and C link. And the other three were just kind of sitting around right. waiting. You cannot do that because the second that they just sit around and wait, the other team is going to take advantage. They, right. You right. saw the amount of use they used to take A main. Yep. So I don't think fighting A main is the play here. No. But definitely setting up and playing together towards that site, fighting the choke points with the amount of utility they have, the paranoia, the need, the sky dog, the sky flash, that is going to be super, super important. Tech issue resolved, gameplay resumes. You see the, the buy for EG is, is non-existent at this point, but it does seem like a slightly different approach. You've got the Viper wall that's cutting off B and A. The thing is, an Aerie with a really a great opening to the round, gets the cam up aggressively. You're starting to see the rotations out towards C and they're guessing wrong. I mean, again, this is exactly what I was talking about, getting that early information. But instead You're they dead. pressured A and thought it would be enough, but it is not. SMG just waiting patiently outside of the A main. And look at how much space that they are taking. The Cypher pushed all the way through the stairs. This is going to be so hard for EG to retake. I mean, this is such a miserable position to be in. This this is already difficult enough when you don't have the One guns to fight remaining. back with, right? Yeah. But then you find yourself in a position where you have to retake, you have to flood out into the site, into all of this situation. Guess what? Yeah, it ends in a prime gaming flawless. SMG up massively. And it, EG find themselves in a position now where, I mean, you, you, uh, yeah, I mean, you have to win this round, or we're talking about, hey, yeah. it's, it's over. EG trying to gamble, but they gambled wrong, and that is one of the worst things that you can do on a second round like this because you really need to gamble right. You really need to be able to get those close fights with pistols. Like you said, the guns and the range and taking space away from them, that was just everything that SMG wanted to do. And they did it so successfully. Like EG completely free. I mean, it was it was beautiful. The timing on it was gorgeous. It yeah. was almost it was almost simultaneous in as EG was rotating off, they filled into yeah. A main. They got to run it back online. They had everything they wanted. So once again, we've talked a lot about the performance that SMG is pushing on, uh, putting on from the comp to the way that they're executing the comp, the way that they have EG in fits right now where they can't really figure out what they should be doing or how to handle what's on the other side. This has just been, a, it really has been a masterclass performance. At least just one map, but it has been beautiful to watch. Yeah, for sure. I mean, earlier the Dust was talking about how Inari and the rest of the squad had so much to prove coming in here yeah. that they finally have the opportunity to show what they wanted to show last year. And I think that they are taking that opportunity and really proving to it to us right now that they are not here to play. They're here to win. The gutsy call paying off. And I mean, Loki, while well, ultimately I don't love the cop just on like a fundamental level, I, I respect the little ever living <laughs> mess out of the fact that this is how they open their international run. That's just dope. Yeah, I mean, if I was playing against them after seeing this, I'd be shaking in my boots. <laughs> yeah. I'd be like, guys, uh, <laughs> no, just fight, man. Like, I don't know. They're so good, dude. <laughs> good luck. Oh, my gosh. Taking this mount control is super important. They're going to get that orb again, like you mentioned earlier, farming it on that Phoenix. Two pips already. We've already had an ult online. For SMG, this is really, I mean, mind you, this is only the... The third round of the half, sec yeah, third round of the half. Um, but it, we find themselves, or we find them in a position where they aren't just full sending. They're a bit more calculated on this. You saw them feel things out towards C, see if there's any killjoy utility that they can clear out. Much to their dismay, it's set up towards A, but this is a much more calculated ap approach, which is really encouraging for SMG fans because it shows that there's depth to how they want to play things. It's not just hold W. They know what they're doing. Yeah, for sure. Putting pressure on that one side and using that pull-push scenario that I was talking about earlier to kind of get those rotates. And again, they get the site for free. But all of EG is here. They are ready to flood. They are coming up with a plan right now. But they need to know that this plan needs to win them this round. Scary Shark using the nade. Thea has a smoke. The flash has already come out from Lori. 
Seemed like they were waiting on some of the utility to push out. Satchel in the face. The second curveball comes through. The snap from Alexis just filthy. As another run it back comes through. But Starbound is in a position where she should be able to punish. An area on the one. It's all on the Starbound. Starbound falls. And the slaughter continues as SMG find themselves on map point. It's just so map rough point. trying to five-man retake from heaven. Like, yeah. that's not how it works. Yeah. You need to be able to take that space. You need to have someone going towards stairs, towards baby door, that A link, getting a flank in, anything else. But having so much people coming in through that heaven, and you have all this util on the other side because they just took the site for free, Doug. It's, it's impossible. It's a really hard post plan to kind of counter. And I think EG really need to get it down this round because obviously it is match point. Map point, sorry. 21 and 6 from the Sentinel for SMG. It's another orb going in favor of Alexi. The game plan is airtight for, for the number one seed coming out of the APAC region. You see why. Mind you, again, it's just been one map, but you see why they come in with an undefeated record. You see why we hit the graphic at the beginning, <laughs> Star Wars vibes. Like, it totally makes sense. Yeah, I mean, the confidence that they're showing is definitely reasonable with everything that they've done right. over this year, and they're kind of proving that to not only themselves, but to everyone at this event. But one thing I want to talk about really quick is how EG is kind of messing up these rotations even though they still have KJ Util up half the time and you see like retaking this A main info everything has to be so much quicker in order to catch these guys off guard. Empress online you hear the leers the satchels forward out from Shirazi and the kills going oh in favor of the duelists. I mean it, it's just really it's really tough to say much else to be honest. Uh, I think SMG have just rolled EG and there's uh, there's going to be a lot to talk about uh, in between maps. Who knows if they run a different comp. Either way, it was a slaughter from beginning to end. 13 to 3 in favor of SMG. EG with a lot of things that they have to answer here. Yeah, I mean, we were talking about how SMG is just straight up rolling them. I think this was the biggest, biggest show of forcing the other team to play at your pace. Yeah, yeah. SMG forced EG to play at their, their pace. A 1-0 lead in favor of SMG. We're going to throw it to a break. We'll see you all on the other side. When you play an actual ranked game, it's 50 minutes, but how much are you actually shooting? With Aim Labs, you can compete in over a thousand tasks that will prepare you for any scenario in any game. So the new ranked season, you play, you get points, you can compare yourself to your friends. With Aim Labs' new one-to-one -one Valorant maps, you get instant feedback on how to get better crosser placement, better peak efficiency. You can also instantly modify existing tasks with Discovery. Get started today by downloading Aim Labs for free and join millions of other satisfied players.